Album artwork has been an important part of music history for years, and some bands go a bit too far trying to get away with as much as possible. While there are many examples of this over the past few decades, this video takes a look at 10 more well-known albums that had infamous original covers. Not a top 10, no ranking, these albums are not ranked in most controversial. Also, only one artist per entry, as some of the bands on this list have several band album covers. You know how these videos work, let's get to it. The album cover for Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction is iconic. The Celtic cross with skulls has a great design, simplistic but unique, instantly identifiable, then you open up the liner notes and wow, robot sexual assault! What is wrong with Axel? What's crazier is that this was the original album cover choice. The, uh, whatever you want to call this, came from a painting by Robert Williams and absolutely no stores would sell it as is. Understandable, it's a hard sell to go and buying an album with that on the cover because you heard Welcome to the Jungle on the radio. As a compromise, the robot scene was put inside the liner notes and the cross was kept as an album cover. Twitch I think was an odd choice considering that this album was sold to the little ones back in the day, but then again, Axel loved to be wild and yeah, this is wild I guess. It's not the first bit of extreme artwork to be included in liner notes, but the fact that the group wanted this as the album Album cover. Ugh. This artwork predates Edgelord Cringe by decades, considering they were going for shock value and for no other reason than Axel probably thought it was awesome. A lot of trouble has happened with Axel thinking something is awesome, even though it was actually awful. A lot. Speaking of another debut, back in 1988, Jane's Addiction was going to try and get all artsy and creep show with their imagery. The original album cover for Nothing Shocking was something deemed a bit shocking, featuring nude conjoined female twins with their heads on fire. I mean, it's eye-catching if nothing else. Perry said that the image came to him in a dream. I'm not sure what kind of absolute bonker stuff he dreamed about in the 80s, but if this was the winner, I'd hate to know the other wild stuff he dreamed up that didn't make the cut. The old paper bag treatment was given as stores would only agree to sell Jane's Addiction debut with brown wrapping over the cover. The album would still sell well and lead to bigger things before the tumultuous career of Jane's Addiction would have a world of problems. Can't deny that the band's major debut definitely had some heads turning, however. Word of mouth and radio play spread fast and at the face of it all was some nice ladies on a rocking chair. That's... sweet? I don't know. Moving into the mid-90s, Pantera were on top of the world with success, and what better way to show how intense and extreme their next album was going to be than with a picture of a man having a spiral drill getting... the... Uh, drilled. I'll leave it at that. I don't think I need to go into more graphic detail than that. Do you understand the need for some of the censored bars now? YouTube bots are going to lose their cyber minds with this video. In 1994, after some government regulation was passed on what could be on the cover of some media, Pantera lightened the violent imagery a touch by having a drill go into a skull. This was okay according to everyone though. The album went to number one on Billboard and the cover of the album almost featured the world's worst prostate exam. I'm trying to be creative in describing this without getting too graphic, but yeah, there's no way around what this actually is. Pantera did not care one bit and probably laughed the entire way to number one. I think deep down Pantera knew this album cover wouldn't fly, but I can't imagine they cared one bit. Jumping back a few decades, Scorpions are no strangers to shocking album covers as they've had several be quite upsetting to the general public over the years. The one I want to talk about is their artwork for 1979's Love Drive, featuring a well-dressed couple in the backseat of a car and a massive amount of chewing gum connecting a man's hand to a woman's breast. On top of that, the album back cover had the woman's breast completely exposed. The US market at the time lost their minds at selling this and instead, the album was sold with a generic blue scorpion design. The artwork was done by Storm Thorgerson and in a much later interview in 2008, the artist said, Not exactly the most politically correct scene you've ever seen. I thought it was funny, but women read a different inflection into it now. I'm not even really sure how funny this is, but maybe I'm just desensitized by other artwork now in 2021. Love Drive's artwork would be restored for the remastered release in the mid-2010s, chewing gum and all. Hilarious to someone, I guess. Also back in the 70s, David Bowie proved that he did not care what anyone thought and was endlessly pushing boundaries to create and change what music could be as an art form. Along with pushing those boundaries came some album artwork for Diamond Dogs that made quite a few upset in the UK by making David Bowie himself a man dog or dog man or whatever. The absolute gall of David Bowie came to fruition by showing David Bowie dog genitals, which one, assumes David Bowie was nude on his own album cover, and two, that this is somehow bestiality. Yes, those were real concerns back in the day. Of all the offensive art out there, I'm not sure this is the hill to die on when it's clearly just David Bowie as a man dog. 
The compromise? Neutering the man dog. Yeah, once they removed the dog genitals off the cover, everyone was apparently happy. Diamond dogs would sell well off the steam of Rebel Rebel, and David Bowie learned a lesson in how offended people can be over dogs. I think. I'm actually not sure if there's a lesson here. Of all the things David Bowie has done in his career, I feel like looking back at this, it kind of seems tame, even by 70s standards. Let's talk about angry church groups who hated heavy music. Poison was all about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So when Poison decided to have a tiger-faced demon woman with an extra long tongue sticking out, everyone in Sunday schools across the country collectively lost their minds. This was a sign of the devil. Tiger-faced demon tongue woman. <laughs> Really? This? This is what caused panic back in the day? I mean, Poison and their label caved and released a newer version just showing the eyes on the cover. There, now she's safe. Keep in mind, Open Up and Say Ah was a massive breakthrough for Poison. While critically it wasn't praised across the board, it sold well. So apparently Bambi, the model who posed for the album cover, was not a terrible idea. The controversy might have helped sell the album a bit more in the sleazy world of glam metal. I'm using controversy in the loosest term possible, by the way. Come on, this is nothing even by Brett Michaels standards. A few years after Poison's controversy, U2 decided to get in on the action as well and push some boundaries with their own album cover for Octong Baby. But instead of a model painted up as a tiger with a long tongue, U2 decided on a collage of images and one picture being of bassist Adam Clayton nude. That's it. Just a naked bassist out there. I mean, bassists don't get much attention, so that's one way to get noticed. The intention of the collage album cover was to have the images confound expectations of U2 and to contrast with past notions. The problem? Most stores weren't going to have it in the early 90s. Along with U2 having a fairly clean image, as well as a strong religious fan base, some changes had to be made pretty quickly. A censored version of Clayton was mocked up with a black X and four-leaf clover. However, select vinyl pressings would feature the uncensored musician still on the cover. Octung Baby would be a reinvention for the band in the early 90s, and on the front of that reinvention was Adam Clayton's four-leaf clover for the world to see. Do Irish men refer to that down there as their four-leaf clover? Is that why they did it? Because U2 is Irish and... You know what? No. I don't want to encourage four-leaf clover jokes in the comments, I'm just gonna stop. In the earlier years of Red Hot Chili Peppers' career, the band was absolutely out of control. They were legit insane with their onstage and real-life antics. When it came to the 1989 album cover for Mother's Milk, the band wanted to get just a bit cheeky with model Donna Lane, topless, covered only by a flower and the band placed in position. One, Donna Lane wasn't even told she was chosen for the album cover after the shoot. And two, stores everywhere gave a hard no saying this was too revealing. Red Hot Chili Peppers really loved nudity back in the late 80s and early 90s. Just everything about it. So what was EMI's solution back in the day? To blow up the image of the band members even bigger to cover slightly more of the woman's skin. That's it. That way, censors and stores were happy. I'm not sure what percentage of a woman's body has to be covered up in order for it to be okay to put on an album cover, but apparently EMI Red Hot Chili Peppers calculated the perfect amount to make the same album idea presentation work by placing everything where they did, including Anthony standing breast left. Not house left or stage left, breast left. The band that revolutionized the world even had an album cover that was a big no-no from people. Back in 1966, the Fab Four squeaky clean image that made the ladies swoon was not as squeaky clean for the front of yesterday and today as it probably would have caused quite a bit of pearl clutching if seen in storefronts. The original cover of yesterday and today featured the four butcher's coats covered in raw meat and severed baby doll parts. Yeah, this did not fly well in the 60s and the outrage was instant. Capital Records changed the cover as fast as possible to a stock image they already had of the band. This was right before the Beatles really tried to experiment with their sound and only a few months before the legendary Revolver, so to say that the Beatles survived the album cover outrage change is an understatement. It would not be the only controversial album cover related to members of the Beatles either, but seeing the boys with big smiles on their faces posing for what looks like a B-horror movie yeah, it's something you don't expect. Ending with another debut from one of the biggest bands of all time, and it started in the toilets. Literally. Metal Up Your Ass. Originally the title of the band's live 1982 demo, Metallica wanted to name their debut this to really show their intensity. According to Lars Ulrich, We were gonna have a hand coming through a toilet bowl, holding a machete, dripping with blood, and the toilet had barbed wire around it. That would have gotten everyone squirming uncomfortably. Yeah, their label at the time gave a hard no to both the album title 
metal and album artwork. Looking back now, this is absolutely something 15 year olds would think of in a garage. Keep in mind that Metallica were not that much older at the time, and Metallica played in many a garage, so there is some connection there. Cliff Burton was not happy with being told no, and was so upset he famously said he wanted to kill them all, referring to the label. The band ran with that idea as the new title and used Cliff's bloody hammer as the album cover. As stupid as it is, I have to say this album cover is just adorable when you think they were trying to make people squirm at how uncomfortable it is. It just looks hilarious and cartoony. Ugh, Metallica would have much better album covers in the future. Know of another controversial album cover? Leave a comment and let everyone know. Big thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Brandon Barrettfeld and Chris Doman. You can have a say in upcoming videos, get weekly new music playlists, and see videos early by supporting Rocked on Patreon. Please click the link in the video description for more info. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of upcoming videos, and keep up to date with Rocked on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Album artwork used to be a much bigger deal with vinyl and CDs. I think that's something that was lost when everything went digital. I'm glad that vinyl is making a resurgence and we get to see unique artwork more prominently and not whatever Axl Rose thinks is cool. Yikes.